welcome sweet friends to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul. We're an early retirement debt and mortgage free couple living in the state of New York. And our channel basically shows you how to live a full abundant life while spending less money. And today we have done that. We went food shopping for just a couple of lost leaders. And while we were in the store, we found so many reduced priced items. And we were able to make a small stock up haul that we're going to share with you. And some of these prices were downright amazing. We're also going to show you a small hack I use when I dress my tables for a meal a quick tablecloth hack, and we're also going to share a meal plan with you. Being that it's Tuesday, it's viewer's choice or challenge, and someone had asked, what do you do if a recipe you're making doesn't turn out the way it should? How do you save it? As you know, when you send your viewer's choice questions into my email, I take them and I put them in a separate folder and then I go through them, I look at them, I'll highlight them. This one I got a while ago and it pertains to something that just happened this past week that was almost a total fail, but I am going to share that with you and how we salvaged it. Just what we hope is a really full, encouraging video. The first thing I wanna share with you is an easy tablecloth hack. You know I love vintage linens, vintage tablecloths. They're expensive. So when you find one at a reasonable price, it doesn't always mean it's going to fit your table. Back in the 40s and 50s, the majority of the tables were square and the tablecloth was usually big enough for about four people on a regular square or rectangle table. We have a round table in our kitchen. So what do we do when we find these beautiful vintage tablecloths, but they don't fit our table? I'm gonna show you and I hope you can use this hack and it doesn't have to be a vintage tablecloth, but anytime you find a cloth that you love that may be a little too small for your table. We're gonna turn the camera around. I wanna show you this. I wanna show you a fun hack I do with my vintage tablecloths. I have a round kitchen table with two leaves that come with it. Turns into an oval that seats eight, but we just keep it a small round table because it's just Paul and I usually. And there are so many gorgeous vintage tablecloths out there, but they are a smaller size and they're usually square. So what I do, I put a solid round tablecloth underneath. I have a turquoise one and I have a pink one that I have had for years. And I put them underneath and then I put the smaller tablecloth on top. And guess what? It looks beautiful. This needs to be ironed, but I just wanted to show you. I got this at a church rummage sale for $2. My colors, the pink and the turquoise, but this is a great way that you can use any size linen on your table. I just so happen to have the pink and the turquoise ones, but even a cream one or a plain white one would have been perfect. So just a great little hack. Dixie, you helping mommy? Are you watching mommy? Are you helping me film? Isn't that fun? One of my dear friends suggested I do that. And I was just like, oh my gosh, what a great idea. Now it just so happens I've always had the pink and the blue tablecloth. And a lot of my tablecloths that I use kind of are in those tones, so it works out perfect. But you could just use a plain white tablecloth that you get on clearance, and then you can dress it up on top any way you like. So just a great little hack to save some money and let our table just look welcoming and warm. Now for the food haul. I can't tell you how surprised we are at this food haul. $39.11 was our total. And we just went to Acne and Stop and Shop because I have to be honest with you, lately ShopRite's deals are pretty dismal. 
we haven't really seen anything that has been popping out wow to us. And you know that is our go-to food store for low prices. We didn't need a lot. As you know, I've showed you our inventory. We're really good on meat and things like that. And our pantry is pretty well stocked, but we continue to stock it. Some of these finds were rather surprising. As we were going through Stop and Shop, up and down the aisles because we just had a little time to kill. Honestly, we're having a date day. Yeah, that's our big date day. We go food shopping. So, <laughs> so we're going up and down the aisles. And as I'm looking at these yellow tag items that show the sale prices, I'm noticing signs that say 75% off, 60% off. And I'm going to show you this in the haul. And I started saying, okay, Paul, we're going to go up and down every aisle and see how many of these items we can find that we will use. You're not going to buy something because it's on sale if you're not going to eat it. So that is a total waste of money. Don't buy just because something is on sale. If you take nothing away from this video, take that. Don't ever buy anything just because it's a good price. Make sure you need it. You'll use it. That is exactly what we did. So I'm going to turn the camera around and we are going to show you our $39.11 stock up food haul. Here you go. We are going to start with our Acme loss leaders. The first was the cauliflower crust pizza. We picked two roasted vegetable ones. They were $1.99 and they gave us a dollar off digital coupon, so 99 cents for each pizza. You know that's gonna go for a no cook night <laughs> one night, and at 99 cents, I don't know if any of you have ever tried these, but they are amazing. Also from Acme, I picked up an avocado, special price of 89 cents. The eggs were $2.86 a dozen. Now, I don't know the price by you, but that was amazing. I still have a dozen and a half in the refrigerator, so I didn't want to overdo it, but I did get two dozen at that price. The milk I got at Acme as well because it was the cheapest, $4.17 cents a gallon. Our gas here in New York right now is $4.35 a gallon. I bet some of you, you're paying less for gasoline than we just paid for a gallon of milk. That was my little acne haul, just a couple of real good loss leaders. Now, as I said, as we were going up and down the aisles in Stop and Shop, the bargains were just jumping out at us and we were putting them in the cart for later use. This one pound bag of round top Stop and Shop white bread was 64 cents a loaf. So we bought two of them. They will go right into the freezer. They'll make some great French toast. I can make croutons. Then for a dollar, they had a bag of six different rolls. They're sesame. I believe these down the bottom look like onion, $1 for six rolls. And they are soft, so I am not worried about them being stale. The zucchini and the yellow squash were 97 cents a pound. That just blew me out of the water. This sale goes all the way on till this Thursday, which would be the 18th. So I'm thinking we'll go back and get more of these. But I got three of the zucchini and three of the yellow squash, 97 cents a pound. Corn, which we have not had since 4th of July because it has been so expensive, was five years for $2, so 40 cents an ear. And we did treat ourselves to this because you know what? We can only get it for such a short season. And I thought 40 cents an ear was pretty good and they actually look beautiful. So I am pretty excited to have some corn on the cob. Their romaine lettuce was $1.49 for the bunch. Can't beat that price. It wasn't the pound, it was the bunch, so I got the biggest one. Their bananas at Stop and Shop, 49 cents a pound.
Now for some really great stock up items we found as we were walking the aisles. These Nature's Promise Organic Navy Beans. They're a pound package. They were marked down to 92 cents a bag. You know we are not bean eaters, but at this price, when I make my escadolin beans, I will use these. If I make homemade baked beans, I will use these. Let me just show you the difference in price from what they were originally. They were originally $2.29 a pound, marked down to 92 cents. This was another amazing find. Milk, chocolate, and peanut butter flavored morsels. They are 11 ounces, $1.40 a bag. They were marked down as well. $3.49 originally, $1.40 a bag now. What's so wonderful is baking season is coming up and I am super excited to be able to have these and put them away for that. There were a bunch, but like I always tell you, we stock up, but we don't try to take every last bit because we'd like to leave some of these fantastic bargains for others. Another amazing price. Duncan Hines Perfectly Moist Pineapple Supreme and Perfectly Supreme Carrot. They were 96 cents a box. And all these expiration dates are well within. This one is March 17th of 23. So it's not like they're outdated, whether they're just discontinuing the items. I'm not sure, but 96 cents a box, we grabbed them. Here they are, originally $2.39, marked down to 96 cents. Now, this was a guilty pleasure for Paul. If you know, Paul loves blueberry Pop-Tarts. And if you saw any of our hauls back in the day, he would get a box every once in a while. These are his absolute favorite. Well, these were a little crush. These are the bigger boxes. These are the 12 pastries, the six pack. They retail over $4 a box. $2.09 because the box was crushed. I got him two of these. Even if they're crushed, I don't think they're going to be so bad. Again, the date is July of 23. So that was just a fun little treat we're going to put in the pantry for him. Now, this was, I think, the score of the day. Plantation Unsulfured Blackstrap Molasses. These retailed for $5.99. I paid $1.50 a bottle. Here they are, $5.99, 75% off. I never buy molasses because it is so expensive, but one of the things I love is gingerbread. And these are good till November of 2024. These are such a great stock up item as well. I am thrilled with what we got. Who knew all these specials would be in time for the baking season, in time for soups and stews, all the fresh vegetables that are in season they reduced, bread, very, very happy. My stop and shop total came to $26.11. I saved $29.31. My Acme total was just about $13. So there you have it, a great little loss leader stock up haul. I just want to encourage you, the sales are still out there. We just need to be like little detectives and find them. We're feeling pretty good about that little haul. It was so wonderful to find molasses for $1.50 a bottle. It was such a surprise. Even the beans, though we're not bean eaters, we love pork and beans, so I know I definitely can make crock pot pork and beans with those dried beans. And we do eat them in escadol and beans. I know I'll use them then, and at that price, I, I couldn't pass them up. They will definitely go into our pantry. And all those baking items, the cake mixes for 92 cents, and they were some good flavors, carrot and pineapple, oh yeah, and the chips. I mean, it was just a great stock up haul to put away. 
The vegetables were all on super sale. Under a dollar a pound for squash in our area is unheard of. And we don't grow squash in our garden. So that was just a nice bonus. Be a little detective, like I said. Get into the stores, look on those bottom shelves, look for clearance tags on the shelves. Any food store you're going to. This just happened to be at Stop and Shop. Check the flyers for those lost leaders. Check the day old bread rack. Look at those loaves of bread, six rolls for a dollar. I mean, they were beautiful hard rolls. We can make a bacon, egg and cheese sandwich on it, or maybe a sausage and pepper wedge. Just great to have in the freezer and pull out when you need it. So I encourage you, be the detective, get in those stores and find those lower prices. Now, I just want to give you our quick meal plan for the week because another way to save on food is by meal planning. And I know not everyone does this because when I do talk about meal plans, I get sometimes, well, it doesn't work for us. And remember, you do what works for you. This is your frugal journey. You're not going to do what I do or like they do or that one does. You're going to do what works for you. And that's what makes it work. That's what makes it so Perfect. I'm just going to give you our quick meal plan for the week. Hopefully it will encourage you to meal plan for the week. And I don't do them on any particular day. I think I've told you this. We just meal plan from what we have in the house. We never want to run out to have to get anything. And then whenever we feel like eating this meal, that's the day we do it. So tonight we are having London broil crock pot stew. I can link the recipe where I have made this before down below, check it out. Great, great recipe. And you use a cheaper cut of beef, but in the crock pot, it comes out so delicious. Another meal we're having is air fryer chicken tenders, mashed potatoes, and green salad. Another meal will be pork chops that we fry in a pan. We're going to cook them with our homemade hot pepper vinegar peppers. So we're going to have that with a green salad and rice on the side. Another night, we're going to have pasta with regular tomato sauce, no meat in it, and then we'll have some garlic bread and some roasted string beans. We have a package of chicken sausage in the freezer that was a Acme Saturday sampler for free, and it's an apple smoked sausage, something like that. So I'm gonna make that with homemade potato salad and some baby carrots and dip on the side. Another night, we are gonna have an easy night and make grilled cheese sandwiches and soup. I have my Italian soup frozen in the freezer and we'll just have that with grilled cheese. So that's just a bunch of days worth of meals that we wanted to share with you to encourage you, if you like to meal plan and it works for you to go ahead and do it. And that's today's question of the day. I want you to leave down below just five days worth of an easy, simple meal plan that you are going to incorporate this week. And this is kind of a challenge. So just give me, you don't have to be elaborate, don't include recipes, nothing like that. Just simple, quick meals that you know you have in the house for the next five days that you can put together. Share that with us because it will not only give Paul and I ideas on maybe something different and fun and delicious to make, but it will also give our subscribers some ideas as well. Now, finally, we are going to get to our what do we do when we mess up in the kitchen? And this was a good one. Do you remember that I bought the Shelf Stable whipping cream from Trader Joe's and I showed it to you in a haul? Here it is. Right on the back of that container, it says you need to chill it for six hours before you whip it. Six hours, people, it has to be cold, basically, before you whip it. I take this container, I put it into my KitchenAid, and I start whipping it. And I'm going, Paul, this is weird. <laughs> what were you thinking when I was showing it to you? It just didn't, it didn't, you know, turn into whipped cream. It just was <laughs> spinning around like a, a solution and getting clumpy. 
a solution. It, I'm not kidding. It was really bad. I'm going, what the heck? So I'm looking at the box. Sure enough, it said six hours chill. So I'm like, no problem. Okay, now I should stop right here. I also have added powdered sugar to it. So now it's sweet cream. I mean, sweet. Because I was making a cake for my brother's birthday and it needed whipping cream. So I said, okay, no problem. I'm going to stick it in the freezer and that'll chill it. And then it'll just keep whipping. It will come back to life and it'll be great. Did it come back to life, Paul? No, not at all. Not at all. It just kept getting sloshier. So I am going to show you what happened. Take a peek. So here's what it looks like. I'm going to continue to beat it because I'm going to bring it all the way to the butter stage, I guess. The problem is, like I stated, I had added powdered sugar to it as well. So I'm going to keep beating this and we'll see what we come out with. Okay, here it is. You know I am going to be keeping this buttermilk because I will do something with it. But I am putting it into a strainer right now because I looked up how to make butter from heavy cream which is exactly what I did. Did not mean to do it, but I did it. Now under here, I am going to keep that. I'll figure something to do with it. And now I'm just pushing it through too. It says that I should run this under water and rinse it. But I'm not going to do that because I am going to be making chicken piccata tonight. I'm gonna to add it just like this. I don't wanna waste anything. So I'm just going to keep squeezing it, but I don't know if I really need to rinse it. So did that give you a good chuckle? So I am no different than anyone, really. So what did I do with this cream? Well, after I had taken all the buttermilk out and I had the actual solid cream, like I said, it had said to rinse it, and I was like, well, it's got sugar in it already. I I've totally made a mess, and I measured it. It was about five tablespoons. So I tried a little on toast and it just was weird. I can't tell you it was like too sweet for toast. So I said, you know what? Let's make chicken piccata in the crock pot because chicken piccata uses lemon and butter. So a little sweet butter may not be bad. How did it come out? It was fantastic. Yay! It was fantastic. <laughs> I saved it. Needless to say, Always think outside the box if something goes awry in the kitchen. Long as it's safe to eat, figure a way to use it. <laughs> well, we hope this video was encouraging. We hope it was helpful. We had a great time putting it together for you. We thank you so much for being here today. If you have not subscribed, click that button, come on in and be part of our family. Hit that notification bell, click and hold it and go to all. So every time we make a video, you will get an alert. Don't forget the comment, five day quick and easy meal plan that you know you can put together from items you already have in the house. That's gonna be a great encouragement. So thank you again for spending this time with us. We ask you to be well, we ask you to stay safe. And above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God bless you.